Alrighty, folks, we're now 3-0 and in our last three Extra Daily Picks on my website. And the good news is we have another Extra Daily Pick going off here today. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But before we go ahead and move on, just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to my Major League Baseball free pick video here today for Thursday, August 3rd, 2023. Happy Thursday to you. Weekend's right around the corner. We are almost there. Of course, my name is Brock Page. I've been dishing out free sports picks right here on YouTube since 2016. I also sell my personal premium selections on patreon.com slash Brock Page. Once again, guys, I'm 3-0 in my last three extra daily picks on that website. And if you want to sign up for that membership here today, it's only going to cost you just $2.99 for 30 days of service. But wait, there's more. Because if you sign up for that membership here today, I'm also going to throw in for you my daily best play, absolutely free. It's going to be included with your purchase. You're going to get access to that membership as well for the next 30 days. I currently have over 525 members who are signed up and active on my website right now. And with that, folks, let's go ahead and dive into some free content. We're going to start off with the Phillies at the Marlins, 1210 Eastern first pitch. Philadelphia is minus a buck 30, totals eight and a half. Michael Lorenzen for Philadelphia, Johnny Cueto for Miami. And even though Cueto's got a pretty good whip, uh, he's thrown just 16 innings and he's gotten ERA in the fives. And despite last night's offensive performance, the Marlins have consistently struggled to score runs this year. These guys are a bottom three run producing team in the National League. They're facing newly acquired pitcher Michael Lorenzen for the Phils, and uh, he had some real good stuff in Detroit this year despite his record. The righty's got an ERA in the threes along with a 1.10 whip. The Phils are also a top 10 hit producing lineup on the road. Bryson Stott's hitting 303, and he has a 3.3 wins above replacement average. Meanwhile, Kyle Schwarber's got 27 homers, and he's also been walked 80 times this year in that leadoff spot. So even though his batting average is just putrid, the guy gets on base. And that's what uh, Robbie Thompson likes. He likes that leadoff spot uh, getting on the base pass. Now Christian Pache, he's still out for Philly. JT Romuto is questionable. The Phils are 16 and 11 of the under against the NL East this year. Meanwhile, Miami, uh, Miami saw five out of their last eight contests at Lone Depot Park stay under the line. Give me Philadelphia minus a buck 30. Under eight and a half. Next contest, White Sox, Rangers, 205 Eastern first pitch. Texas is minus 270, totals nine runs. Max Scherzer making his debut for Texas. Tukey Toussaint for Chicago. And even though uh, Tukey's looked kind of good this year, the Sox don't want to win for the guy. Toussaint's recorded just one win in 32 plus innings. When it comes to offensive production, the Sox are a bottom five run producing lineup in the American League. Uh, they're facing newly acquired Max Scherzer, who's got 121 strikeouts and a 1.19 whip. Uh, he's now backed by the most dangerous lineup in the American League, kind of a stark contrast from the Mets. Uh, the Rangers are cur currently um, scoring 6.1 runs a game in their own building. Corey Seager's hitting 352 with an OPS in the thousands. Adelise Garcia's got the most RBI in the American League. Uh, Josh Smith, he's questionable for Texas. Uh, Haim and Miller are still out. The Rangers did see three out of their last four at Globe Life Field get over the number. They're also 66% to the over in all of their contests in their own stadium. Now, the White Sox allowed over 5.1 runs a game in their last 10 meetings with the Rangers. So if you're into historical trends, certainly want to think about that one there. Give me the Rangers, minus one and a half, over nine. Next matchup, Mets, Royals, 210 Eastern first pitch. Kansas City's minus a buck 20 at Kauffman Stadium, totals nine runs. Brady Singer for the Royals, Carlos Carrasco for New York. And uh, even though the Mets were sellers this year at the trade deadline, uh, they still retain guys like Pete Alonso, who you still have to worry about pitching to. Uh, Alonzo's got the third most home runs in the majors. He's also in the top five in the National League in RBI with 77 of them 
Francisco Lindor's got 21 homers and a wins above replacement average of four flat. Now they're facing a Royals club who's got the worst record in the AL Central. Uh, they actually have fewer wins than any other franchise in the majors besides Oakland. And no real shock here, folks. The Royals are a bottom three run producing lineup. Now, pitching wise, Brady Singer comes into today's ball game with an ERA in the fives along with a 1.46 whip. Meanwhile, uh, Nick Prado, he's still out for Kansas City. Uh, Brandon Nimmo is questionable for New York. Five out of Carrasco's last seven starts for New York did get over the total. Meanwhile, KC saw three out of their last five at Kauffman Stadium get over the line. Give me the Mets plus a dollar over nine. And with that, folks, we're going to jump into our next and final breakdown for part one. Be on the lookout for part two in the next couple of hours or so. It's going to be in that O's Blue Jays game, 307 Eastern first pitch. Toronto's a buck 60 at home, totals eight runs. Kevin Gaussman for Toronto. Jack Flaherty making his debut for Baltimore. Now, Flaherty had 106 strikeouts this year with the cards, and he does come into today's game with a winning record. When it comes to offensive production, the O's are one of the best run-producing teams on the road in the league. These guys are averaging nearly six runs a game in their travels. Adley Rutschman's the club leader in hits. Ryan O'Hearn is batting 306. Now, they're facing a Toronto team on the other side of things who uh, struggles for some reason when Gaussman takes the hill. Uh, former Oriole, by the way, Kevin Gaussman. But uh, anyway, the, o, the uh, Blue Jays lost four out of their last five Gaussman starts, and they got shut out twice during that stretch. Uh, the Blue Jays have also been terrible against American League East opponents this year out of 30 divisional ball games this season. The Blue Jays got the W only eight times. Bo Bichette's still out of the lineup for the Jays. Uh, he's easily been their best player on the offensive side of things. Meanwhile, for Baltimore on the other side, Mullins and Hicks are still out for them. Total-wise, five out of Baltimore's last seven road games stayed under the total. Meanwhile, Toronto went eight and two to the under in their last 10. Give me Baltimore plus one and a half, under eight. And with that, folks, we're going to jump into our quick pick recap for part one. And like I said earlier, uh, be on the uh, lookout for part two in the next couple of hours or so. Give me the Phillies, minus 130, under eight and a half. Texas Rangers, minus one and a half, over nine. New York Mets, plus a dollar, over nine runs. With my next and final free pick, give me Baltimore, plus one and a half, under eight. And with that, folks, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on my website. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. Well, that's it, folks. Happy Thursday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash brockpage.